Okay, so how far are we from running the printer? Are we pretty much ready to do it? Belts are on. Counterweights are on. Heat. Heat is on. Did we do a test run? We've got before the weights were switched out. Any test yeah. run yesterday? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that respect it was functional from beginning to end. Uh, only the print quality was not great on this one centimeter by one centimeter cube. Uh, and but after yeah. that, we switched the weights, right? Yeah. That was yeah. Okay. But we didn't do so a we new should test run because we had a problem with one belt. Uh, that we still have to tighten a bit, I guess. Um, so still a belt to tighten at this point? Yeah, yeah, at least one, I guess. Yeah. Okay, I was hoping we can get to that. And, and the heat um, is basically, yeah, if you print it at one corner, it's basically not not doing it. It's, it's, it's magic, so, yeah. Yeah. Do we have enough PII to cover the Yeah, whole? we do. Oh, yeah. We have it. Uh, we could... Probably a good idea to do that. Um, we have to. Well, it's two one by two, so we need uh, basically use what four of them plus half. The one we already have as a half. Yeah, so we could do that. Um, yeah, maybe we do that uh, because we could use that entire surface now. Uh, are there any issues about burning through it if the lamps are too close? Maybe maybe let's keep it off for a little bit until we make sure we get good heat understanding of the heat diffusion there a little more in case there's really hot spots and the PI would actually get like melt down and stuff. So we have to be careful about that a little bit. It it's, uh, starts melting at like 217 uh, C so uh, that's actually its last transition temperature. It can stand a little higher. Um, inside the heat chamber, how, uh, heat chamber, what sort of temperatures are we? You want to go up to the max would be like 180 for oh, okay. no. for printing with PEI, which is extreme. For now, we can we can do. If we use polycarbonate, like I was thinking of using a polycarbonate top, which gets you to 150, about 150, which is still, I mean, that's pretty high, uh, 150 C. So if you want to print polycarbonate, which would be of high interest for glazing, uh, you need not too high. It's the, uh, one, one place I saw said only 70 C for the heated chamber. Uh, so that's that would be easy. So if we get to 150, we'll do everything. We'd be able to do everything except for extreme plastics like PEI or PEEK and things like that. Um, so we have that up on hand. Uh, as far as the torch table, where we're at on that? The y-axis. Oh, both y-axis are basically mounted. Uh, we left off one of these angle brackets for now, just to have yeah some adjustability going. Still, I mean, we didn't want to basically uh, weld it in completely. Uh, and I mean, the angles they work okay, but still not sure if it's really worth doing that. Uh, I mean, it's a fairly involved welding job, and you have to make sure when you weld that you don't interact with the plastic. Uh, yeah, the heat hard the heat and let's say it, it felt like okay doable but maybe nothing you wanna kind of well you wouldn't weld with the plastic in place you'd take that yeah we did that partially but it's also just nice to have the piece really in its final position put the angle on top and then at least tag it uh, is that, uh, when, when they weld uh, both tabs it's bigger so like Around. Yeah, sure, but then you shim it, yeah. You gotta shim it at the end, no matter what. You can't really get it. Yeah, I mean... You, you can't weld it in place, uh, not really weld it in place. You right. have to take it up. 
Um, yeah, I mean, they had the angle, and of course, as you say, the angle isn't perfect, it's more like this, and um, yeah. It has basically a camper, let's say. So did you actually end up drilling? Uh, no, okay. but we're thinking about drilling the last okay. two positions, basically. So it can be e yeah, easily dismounted. Yeah. But at least, yeah, these axes are done, and I guess we only have to do the x-axis from the y-axis, so that in theory, at least, it's quite easy, right? Okay. But, yeah, the other guys do yeah. this. Uh, did you get anywhere on the, the controller? Or uh, just setting out parts and, and ripping out one, one controller. Um, but not actually, didn't start yet with the wiring, really. Um, I mean, the additional functionality we need. But I'd like to do that this morning. Yeah. Yeah. So at least get a... A motor going um, with the TV, what is it, 6600? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 try that. Um, <coughs> how about Ken? What, what are you, what's your next task? Um, well, so far, yeah, nothing planned. Nothing planned. Yeah. Um, um, do we want to get on to, so we can pick up the shredder parts, um, the big motors. Or we, do we have any manpower for that? It was the question because uh, uh, so Brad could pick it up at lunchtime. Okay. Otherwise, we would pick it up at four because he's doing going by the cooks of. I was thinking maybe we would get started on that if we. Uh, I think we should, yeah. or at least get start. Well, we could get at least started on. Uh, no, I mean we got to get it started. So I would say we we get him to go to uh, pick it up at like noontime. Because uh, days are ticking but start away. But getting the parts, because otherwise we're working really parallel on three projects. I mean, we have the big printer, we have the torch going, and now if we add the shredder on top, then, yeah. uh, just a consideration with manpower and maybe yeah. the, uh, mental <laughs> jumping back and forth between the machines. And, and okay, maybe uh, maybe what we can do is take out, start taking out the other i mean we we could use two controllers actually so maybe why don't you guys since that's a parallel task one for yeah. the torch table but the other one for the for the filament maker the the con wait 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 they both need a controller uh for the filament maker well actually you have the simple on off switch with its own logic of you turn one on and turn the other one on actually there is no controller there except for sensing temperatures so like not for motion but for temperature you're still sensing and controlling the temperature so actually we do need a controller it's convenient to use the screen to set temperature so yes we do we could use that for the filament maker for the the heat barrel uh, so yeah I think that would be a good parallel tasking get out two of the controllers and build them now we don't need TB 6600s on one one is just just a plane with SSR, no stepper motors. So basically, like revive one of the, yeah. revive one of the controllers. Then Holger can move on to the TB 6600s for the torch table on the other, um, and maybe yeah, yeah that part. I mean, we could actually start running, turning on those heat bands, and you know maybe get out the one inch pipe and augers, and um, so maybe start working on that on a on a printer, yeah, I mean, if, as soon as we get the belts, tighten up the belts, yeah, run it, I mean, see what we get, and in terms of the bed heating, how, how even that is, if we have to correct it. Now, one thing, we would want to flip, turn the bed 90 degrees, because the wire is like all the way across, it could be close to the controller, and that wire, we got to switch it out, if we're going to do the heated bed, I was going to look at, if we get this thing started and crank out a big print, we should get right onto the the heated chamber. Yeah, I was Which, just wondering yeah. um, where you hung, hung the, the weights, that, that kind of gets in the way of, of the lid or the heated chamber. Uh, yeah, if, if, if that's the case, but let's take a look at the geometry involved there. So what, what's practical right now based on material considerations and all that. So uh, can you guys look at... Uh, I'm sharing my screen and uh, the zoom. Ken, can you mirror it or not really? Try to mirror it. 
Um, but basically, yeah. Yeah. Can we just do basically simply or not really mount it? Uh, just let it sit on on whatever. Uh, yeah, you can. It wouldn't work for it would work for testing, but it wouldn't work for production. Like if we want to build a bunch of those blades, we'll like overheat pretty quickly and start melting the parts. Yeah. But for testing, like yeah, actually test test the run of it. Yeah. And um, what's the thought on? Uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as we can mount the Z axis, we can start controlling it. Um, the thing to, to figure out there is that one motor going to be able to support the whole weight and move it up and down effectively. The one thing to, to change there would be we have spring a spring steel wire that we can put as an artificial counterweight. So you would wind this spring steel wire mm -hmm. around the rod. So when it drops, it has bounce back. Um, see what I'm saying? Yeah. We do have that very solid spring steel wire and we yeah. it's it's actually hard to work. It's, it's pretty solid. Oh. But yeah, you can put... Um, in a vise, you can put a one-inch shaft and wind that wire around it to make your spring. And that would actually be an interesting thing to do. Sorry, if what is the, so, the z-axis. Oh, just because it's so heavy. It's, it's heavy. heavy. Now. I mean, one other question. I mean, right, the the current design doesn't quite work. Uh, the guys found it out. It's, it's, coming it's too wobbly with the height. And then there was a suggestion. No, but you mount it on the side, not at the top. Mount it at the at the bottom, okay. mounted at the carriage. Oh, so like, yeah, kind of loose. Okay, it's actually up into the oh. air above. If, the if it's mounted on yeah. those metal plates, that's what we found out. It's too oh. wobbly. Yeah, but and I don't want to go to the any... oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, what is our consideration of plastic carriages and such and the heat coming well, that's up why off we, the bed? We want to have the, the water chamber. Well, I get the water, that the water chamber is going to cool it down a bunch, but does it cool it down enough to the plastic melt at a pretty low temperature, right? Um, I would say probably for like an hour of cutting, it'd be good. It will. Okay. Cool. But without it, it, you'd be heating up stuff. Then it would be. Uh, we actually do have a chiller, water chiller, mm -hmm. that we could actually use potentially with that. That was for the laser cutter, which can dissipate. Um, I think like couple of kilowatts of heat now this is I'm not sure how many kilowatts of heat this has but uh, the water table should get you um, my estimate would be like an hour at least okay. at a time which is a bunch great. of cuts I guess we just pay attention to it and make sure it's not going and this is where this is once again the, t the case for the high temperature printer because we can't print with anything but PLA but if you can print with, for example, polycarbonate, that melting temperature is much higher. Like the glass transition is like one, 147 as opposed to like 60 for PLA. Yeah. So you get like 80 degrees C more, yeah, like above boiling. Yeah. You're gonna be good above boiling, so you'll yeah. be pretty good in that part. Uh, but let's look at the the question on a heated chamber, how much how much space do we have? Because we've got, um, let's start with a six foot frame. Because we can only move so much. So if that is the six foot frame, uh, you're reduced to quite a bit less for the overall working area. But still, like if you could get like a square foot, at still above a hundred thousand dollar printer um, none of these things with the high temperature chambers are overly large um, so six foot frame three foot bed about that I, mean, I know you just welded that all on those bearings but is there not just an easy way to swing those out to the outside of the frame because that can you can but I don't think it's relevant for just let's listen to this well just in the context of like oh for future like future uh, or now I, I, future and now just like if we just continually cut corners like that we end up with like 
we had a nine foot thing. Now we have a six foot thing. Now we have a two foot thing. <laughs> okay, but, like? but look at this discussion like? here. You might change your professional opinion after you hear this. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at the practical considerations. I mean, already we shrunk the bed to three feet, and for the consideration of the heavy weight, which we're still trying to negotiate, right? Yeah. So we already went down there to half, but three, like, that's still huge for what, what we want to do. Yeah. Um, so outside of that, you're going to have the heated chamber. Uh, so the heated chamber, well, let's around it. So let's see. So I'm going to make that transparent. So that's the six foot frame. That's the overall. The bed is already there. It's three foot bed. And then, um, the shroud well we need to leave a little bit of space around it I would leave like one inch around the frame yeah. one or even two inches just to keep it safe um, and then you fill that with insulation you know a few inches like four inches or five inches like the thick bats we could use um, yeah, I would just use straight the thick bats we have yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah just yeah, you know like five yeah. inches or something so that man that that heat chamber is pretty solid so look at where's that get us now do we want to do a case with rebar or something or yeah i'm thinking like what's the, the question was like what's the simplest way to do this i think uh flat pieces of rebar so um okay. but check this out but it gets complex so Can listen just get like It would be nice if we didn't have the rods. It gets complicated and you want to seal around the rods. Yeah. <laughs> you got you got rods going through it and you got to seal around them. Yeah, I know. And you've got a top that you want a meshing surface or otherwise all the heat's escaping out of the top too. So let's look at all the complications involved. So, so the sensible thing... Um, so already there we're, we're at... 36 this this would be uh, the inner frame of the chamber would be if that's 36 40 inches if we leave two inches just to you know for s plenty of space to work around um, 40 inch is already there for the inner f this inner frame But this is definitely worth solving and looking into, but it, it's not, I don't actually think there's a simple way, like, I, I thought about this roofing, this sounded, sounds great, but let's examine the complications. So here we're already at 50, at this level here. So that's 50 inches there. So what's practical? to do here well to cover the entire three foot bed is not possible so what you want to probably do is after you've got let me see maybe I can fill this one in with some color so that's your no and you're just thinking as she that's, that's is fine on top. to 147 glass transition temperature 147 C yeah. so it's not 180 180 is extreme that's the ultimate limit when you print PEEK, PEI, the actual print bed surface, you can print that, but you need a 180C heated chamber. So we're not going to do that. So, but I'll be satisfied with 147 for now, because we can solve that easily by making the top out of PEI itself. Now we don't, those sheets don't come in that big size, so you'd have to bond them together and stuff like that. But what we have readily is four foot wide sheets of polycarbonate. So. If that is 50 inches, 
we can cap it with polycarbonate um, and because we can't do the full three foot bed we're, we're essentially looking at let's poke a hole through that top cover and work with that so we have a manageable size but what is a manageable size here um, you can do up to a working area that would be like because you can slip out the sides you can have a working area in this case which is about there you can do a foot by three feet easily oh, it's about the size where the, the weights aren't the yeah. 90 degrees from the weights yeah so. that's so. bigger than most printers already Oh, that's that's called a large printer but and that now we're saying this is a heated chamber at 150 a multi hundred thousand dollar machine if we succeed at that uh, so there's a lot of troubleshooting um, so that's our cool cool area here but what what then that would mean is we might as well cover the entire top I mean to get anything to work here is is the first step like first mounting that shroud underneath the extruders so you have this thing riding on top so the concept being you have a, a shield attached to the bottom of the extruder with only the nozzle sticking out so you mount it to the underside of the carriage underside underside of it or even cut out a hole for the carriage so that the whole thing can sit in there yeah, and it's and you have to be a little precise there because those little distances now matter. You have to be exact there, including the exact height of this um, of the structure that you're building. So, for example, just to shear cut this kind of metal, you'd have to have a clean edge on the top. You you got to have clean have edges. Factory edge on the on the top. Really. Plus, we didn't discuss the fact that there's the rods here, which means that your chamber has to be in like four pieces. It has to be. So what I'm envisioning here is something like um, that's your chamber piece. It's like two clamshells with two. Yeah. Like yeah. Here's another clamshell, and there's a middle part mm -hmm. where. You need to put like some brushing or something. Yeah. On the edges to help. Yeah. Close that gap up. I still have some, but it's not very long. I well, I mean, what, if we have on the underside something like a 1x2 sheet of PEI, we can perhaps just glue the. Well, here it is. You need that edge only around the blue zone here. You'd have a wiper around that blue zone. Okay, so let's. Let me just fill in this detail here. So here's where the bars are going to be in that lighter area and it's really more like but there's a two foot space there where the bars the, the bar separation so these are actually longer quite longer so there you go um, so I would say, yeah, okay, so the wiper now, let's put a wiper, we've got the carbon fiber blanket, which would be a nice, it's, it's like an eighth inch to maybe a little more, uh, but that would be a good wiper attached to the top cover. So that wiper, you, you would want to put it like right there, so basically, like around this. If this was the box doing some sticking out, out of it like this as a gasket. Hold on. I'm thinking, I'm thinking a wiper out of the carbon fiber blanket only needs to be a strip. So that would be that. Stick it onto the top cover of your heated chamber. So yeah, there's the top the cover and yeah, there's the so. underside shield so it's called the shield and top cover so the heat shield is under the extruder uh, this fiber blanket is attached to the top cover where we remount where we cut out that one by three foot hole 
in the middle of the top polycarbonate cover. So let's, uh, this gets, this is not simple. This is okay, messy. So you're basically so, saying have a completely attached cover and make a smaller hole and then put a white, like the gasket on that. Yeah. Gotcha. And then the uh, heat shield slides on, on that. All you that need is that gasket. Yeah. But yeah. already there, man, that's one by three. That's pretty good. Now, the only issue there is that the top heat shield would need to be like two feet by six feet so what do we have in man so the so take a look at this where's the actual heat shield it's gonna be like it's gonna have to be double the size two by six so that's your actual heat shield riding on the underside of the extruder that gets into its own issues now it's supported on top of the box so uh, if it's a thin, like I was thinking actually that could be polycarbonate there. Um, that's your actual heat shield, uh, that blue part, under the extruder. It has to be lightweight, can't be steel or <laughs> whatever. You need to carry that with the extruder. It's so kind of nice having somewhat of a lid on it already that will help yeah so admissible materials are high temperature plastics what do we have on hand PEI we have polycarbonate uh, we don't have PEI that's two by six we have one by two so with a one by two we can only do six inches by 12 inches per print bed and we can try that maybe as the first step because that because the large sheet is going to get into the issues of the whole geometry and and aligning things we should probably try as V1, one by two sheet of PEI, and then we get a, end up with a six by twelve print area, which is still major success. Um, but the but we could do up to this, which is a two by six shield that gets you a one by. Well, you could make this even wider. Like, how much actual area do you have? You could probably go like I mean, three, uh, more than two feet, a little more than two feet, but because you need to move up halfway, it's, so if you got a two foot shield, that means you can go one foot up and one foot down. So we're already spanning four feet. We still have like one more foot to go, but you know, two, two and a half, or maybe three feet, three feet would be the max of your potential shield would be like practically here like two and a half feet and here we're showing so we can say shield is up to can be up to 2.5 feet uh, so that's the sh the heat shield can be up to 2.5 feet by 6 feet in our application um, but if you think about that I mean that's like big pieces of glazing wobbly and stuff um, so let's take a look at a slightly smaller version heated, heated chamber 1 by 2 foot shield because we have that in PEI and that's small small sheet that that would work so in which case our wiper here would be you know, quite a bit smaller sorry could you explain this the, the wiper thing I'm not, I'm not yeah visualizing it. Oh. Ben explain the wiper oh. maybe you have to do that because uh, I thought, you, I thought you were just going to put it along the edge of the opening if you discuss yeah. that thing, it would be better to have an object. To object yeah, I mean, when I think about it, it's probably less important to have. I mean, it probably ends up being maybe good to have it right around the hole, but then also we need something for um, the sheet to slide on, probably on the edge 
of the, the larger frame of the box. Uh, because there's going to be a bit of flex no, in it. It sits on the edge of the, doesn't it? Sit on, on the, the box. Edge of the, edge yeah, of the, the same frame, right? Yeah. There's a top cover mm -hmm. over the entire cham yeah, totally. chamber. But, but what I'm saying is that if we have a six foot long piece of that, I'm imagining there's a little bit of deflection in that, so it's going to have a slight downward arc. So to be able to support it on the edges of the chamber with another bit of gasket just so it slides a bit more, otherwise it's going to yeah. be like... Um, um, yeah. Like, what type of material are you thinking about? A pulley? No, I think just that. I think that um, or just that felt is fine, probably. Will something like uh, like taps, bigger taps? I mean, we could do, but I I think honestly, at this level of design, if we just like add some more of that um, blanket, that that will be smooth enough, and it will be a cushion for it to slide on. It's not like I'm designing that way, I don't think, but we're, we're on kind of critical path of proving the theory, right? Or proving the viability of doing this. Well, where is the, um, the, 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 the blanket? Where does the blanket go? Um, like, let's say this is the actual way. Like, like, so we have two. Okay, let's use one of these boxes. Um, yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah. Um, you let's use your cup or use this thing. Yeah, the a mug is better. Model. Um, Modeling. So mug is better. That's a good. Small. So imagine that that. Um, so that's our print area. Yeah. So we've got that hole. So the whole insulated um, cube has a lid over it, but we're going to cut out a hole in it mm -hmm. there. So that's going to be, I don't know, polycarbonate that goes over yeah. the whole thing. Yep. But then we have another sheet that's got a slide on yeah. top of that. Yeah. So you, we can do right around so we help trap um, heat from there, but it's probably also really valuable to have a strip of yeah. um, that that felt the, the blanket along here, so it just has something. Because if you imagine having like a six foot long thing, there's going to be a slight bit of deflection, which will put the pressure and the friction point on this, right? So I would do like right around the hole, and then along here. I don't know if we need it there, or maybe we need another strip there, wherever, however it's moving. To, to make it smoother. Uh, yeah, just so it has like. Yeah. A blanket to kind of mm -hmm. glide on. Well, it's not a bearing exactly, but. Alright, no, I was thinking of the blanket went down. No, and yeah, uh huh, no. Then, then there's a problem with the bedroom. Yeah. No, that would, be, that would be difficult. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, if you look at the actual model. dimensions, this is what we end up with. That carbon fiber blanket gasket is like 6 by 12. The heat shield is 12 by 24, mm -hmm. uh, so if you put more gasket around the initial proposition there, then your heat shield would get caught on it because it would not be on top of it anymore because yeah. that thing is moving um, all the way to the edges to the black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what, what we've got using this kind of technique. Um, so what are we going to build the the box out of? Uh, I would do I would do rebar for rebar C's, but how do you do that? So structure. Isn't it so much easier just to? Do we have any, any easier form to of roofing material or just sheeting lightweight sheeting? Yeah, we do. We have plenty of this, but so but we the, can unscrew the, this place. No, no, we've got no, we've got a uh, more of that, we but do. Okay. but what about your top? <coughs> you need a well-defined shape. 
How are you gonna just do, do a two by four frame? You weld it, or so you screw it on on both sides. So we could do two by fours, but then the wiper edge here has to be open to the insulation. So I would I would make it open to the insulation, so the insulation is scraping against the rods. Yeah, sure, that's uh, no big deal. Yeah, but how are you gonna build that if there's uh, if there's a stud patch? at the top and there's a stud at the bottom? Yeah. Um, no problem, just pack it in there. You've got two two sides of metal. I think that's just fine, honestly. I mean, if worst comes to the worst, you can screw a block in the middle, like so that it makes it a little bit more rigid. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you've so got the whole height of it, and you have just like two by four up here, and like a, a sill plate and a head plate. Like you've got that whole section of it's maybe a little flappy. I mean, you can put just one block in the middle, which will hold it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to do that, or are you working on other stuff? Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I've worked with this kind of roofing. It's not easy to work with. Uh, that's why I'm proposing the yeah. rebar plus, and then on the rebar we would actually do something like uh, 24 inch wide aluminum flashing, so you can slip the insulation in there really easily, like make the frame out of rebar you put in the flashing in it um, and then you can slip the insulation in very easily and can have the exposed edges now also these parts here that have to go up right up to the uh, to the rods that I would actually use sheets of polycarbonate there like with yeah. wood or something like together because I think we want to maybe open have that openable Readily, like say we got to put a heater, another heater down there or something, uh, but something that's like you can take it off and actually open up the inside of that chamber, um, because that little part there in between the rods, it's just a vertical. Like how are you gonna attach it and stuff like that. So I was thinking of maybe do something like polycarbonate that you put like on the front of the box and that pretty much closes, but it can't be all the way because you gotta allow for the some connection at the top. It has to be like an H shape like that to allow for the rods to go up in between like you have to have some kind of a connection to the top and bottom because yeah. otherwise it's that middle piece what you're saying. well if you think about that middle piece that's yeah. problematic I how are you going to attach that by, yeah, by H. Yeah. Oh, like um, over the yeah like um like at the very top so if you have your heat chamber this is the, looking from the front, let's say. So I'm going to paste that like that. There's your rod space. And this is much taller than this, but you got to have this rod space there. Yeah, totally. Um, so this part here, where do you attach it? How do you attach it? So I'm, I'm saying you gotta have some kind of a strip or bar across the top to, yeah, right to attach it. I was thinking if this whole thing was polycarbonate, it could be, uh, you can cut it out like this and have this tab that you attach to these other pieces. And then this polycarbonate, it will also be a sandwich because you don't want all that leakage. That's like 25% of the surface area there. Um, you'd also fill it with insulation and, and perhaps put polycarbonate on the interior part too. Uh -huh. Um, what's the thermal decomposition temperature of wood? Um, decomposition is like upwards of four, I want to say 470 or something. Four no, not really. No? I don't, I'm guessing. Between 100 and 170 C. Oh, there you go. It's so much less. It's not as, thought. not as good as carbon, polycarbonate it seems okay. possibly. Um, that's why I would try to stay away from wood more than polycarbonate. Start pyrolysis at a hundred. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I really did not know that. Yeah. Um, so something like that. This tab at the top and bottom. So this would be like my polycarbonate cover. But it's also a shell holding insulation. Uh, shell cover, cover with insulation. Those strips, you want to do it with rebar? No, I want to do that polycarbonate. So maybe like weld little nuts here. So I just screw in a bolt and hold down 
through these tabs okay. some shell with insulation if we could do that with like some slices of tubing um, with a with yeah a screw through it on both sides or like not screw through like a bolt yeah tubing or like PVC pipe you yeah. can just screw in like put in a bolt into a welded nut or something like that in fact like the the elongated nuts are quite convenient for that so you could use an M6 bolt that goes in there so have little bolts like right there little bolt attachments uh, would that be the so there's a bolt there Attaching it taking the yeah like reaching inside the chamber if you got to do something like maybe we got to put in a heater there or maybe actually we got to extract a part you know we don't want to go to the top we we put the bed all the way down and take the part from the front um, like four simple bolts like that would work um, you can take that cover off to the side um, and then extract what's what you got underneath. But yeah, this is this is uh, getting uh, quite tricky. Um, so I'm assuming here that this polycarbonate, if you have this double shell, I would leave the sides open so the actual insulation forms the wiper. Um, if you have a clean edge of the insulation, the, the rod goes right in between and otherwise all that space is closed all the time because the insulation kind of bumps right into each other, but it's, it's a slit so the rod can move up and down. Yeah, but this is not easy. This is like a, like a four-piece clamshell that's openable. It's got this clean top so you can put the polycarbonate on it to close it. So you got to have clean seams everywhere. That's, that's the thing. Um, the rebar thing could kind of do it like the top top of the rebar we'd still probably have to weld angle on top to get a clean edge to put the top cover on otherwise it's like all leaks i mean the rebar is not accurate enough Say it's bumped so on top here right here we would want so assuming this is a welded rebar structure which we can do really quickly by doing the six-sided cube method which yeah. means you're building the one side at a time I want to still put re put a angle on top here so that you can lay if you've got your polycarbonate cover it's sitting like on there nice tight edge and in fact put the put the gasket there put the uh fi the carbon fiber blanket there too but then the the other piece has so, to ride over the top of that. Yes, yes, yes. So, You're riding so over the top of this. So here's your your uh, carbon fiber. Except um, that 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 L can't be that tall. It has to be unless less. unless you're riding just in between. Well, no, you're right. You're right. No, it has to be. Well. Yeah. So so we have to bump that up. Uh, put a spacer underneath there and put the wiper up. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably is. like mm -hmm. maybe do like a right some something that would mean more like a tube here. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Completely right. That that has to be this gasket has to be the highest point. In which case, that would it would make sense for that to be a square tube, and then you got this gasket on top, and this extends over it, right? And same on the other side, you'd have this this uh, tube. Let's say we weld this tube to the top of our little frame. Put your gasket there and this tube is all around this perimeter which also begs the question what happens here like that has to be continuous um, so to make that continuous there it's kind of hard to take that door off 
you know, it's, it's, ain't easy. So, right, I mean, this is, uh, yep, no easy way about this. This is like the the former, take a look at the former design, the high temperature heated chamber. I started doing some CAD on it. Um, but it gets, I was thinking initially like, do something like this. I mean, I was actually sticking fire brick in there. Like make a thing out of fire brick, which... Um, do you have fire brick? No. Like... Dude, do this fire brick dry stack C fire brick oh, or no, CBs. No, be so CBs would be great. Yeah, that. but that's that's like building a small home. <laughs> it's yeah, quite a bit away. We've, so is doing all the other stuff we're doing. Yeah, Honestly. yeah, it is in terms of. Uh, I think Honestly, a stackable, think maybe a really good idea. stackable thing, but a three foot structure like that. Um, it's to pretty insane. Of, of and then you gotta CBs. have. What's there? Six, four by six by twelve. Is that traditional Adobe? So um, not sure. Not sure what Adobe is. But, man, uh, in which case, like here, you can simulate these with this, the walls with simply flat panels, which you can do with kinda can do if you make the C section out of that rebar and you stick the insulation in there. It's kinda. But then you still need to address the smoothness of the top with our tube welded on top or something like that. You still need to like weld or at least a flat bar on top to Yeah, actually so the rebar C, weld a flat bar. Yeah, there you go. Weld a flat bar and that bar stays there, the door that's openable um but it still stuff. opens. Just glue some mm -hmm. magnets onto it. And it won't. Yeah, you could do magnets. You could do magnets that yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a whole bunch of magnets where if you do a whole bunch of magnets, they're not coming off. They're hard to pull yeah. away <laughs> in that case. So uh Yeah, but yeah, I could envision the sitting on the ground, the door, and then just like the top just needs like a few the tack it in place when it's Oh, so here's what some quick CAD that's otherwise done. So here you take angle. Can you kind of see this? Angles and flat sheet. This is kind of what I'm talking about with the rebar. Uh, except I'm not using an angle. I'm using rebar and then lining that on the inside with aluminum flashing to get that flat surface because otherwise I mean if that is flat sheet that's a lot of sheet there and it's pretty heavy yeah. so aluminum is actually quite convenient aluminum and rebar you kind of get this lightweight shape a space frame structure that does this and then of course the wiper like between the you know take that so angle there you got to put wiper around that so the material we're using for the walls again is what now it's not roofing material what are we going to use for the walls? Yeah, it would have to be flat. Yeah, so okay. that would be aluminum trim coil, 24 inch wide. Okay. Yeah, yeah, something of that aluminum nature. Flashing. Gotcha. Aluminum flashing. Gotcha. Like the stuff you have around your foundation up on your machine. Yeah. Okay. So you've got that. Or. Oh man, the polyisocyanurate, the, the pink foam insulation. But what's the melting point of that? No um, idea. That would be the greatest if we need silver sided reflective one. That would be so easy. Oh, pink foam insulation. That would max be probably temp. Some higher temp stuff. What's the highest temp foam you can get? 165 at? F. Oh, that's nothing. That's Fahrenheit, yeah. But, but what else is there? There's there's at least a couple different types. There's there's not just the pink stuff. Um, uh, what else? Higher temp foam. What highest? Recording high temp October foam 5, insulation. 2021. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at the critical path. Yesterday we talked about. I guess phone sheets. Oh, like this. Quiet, but no. High temp phones. Has to be ceramic kind of insulation. Has to be some kind of a bat of some rock. Like rock wool is uh, oh. next step up above the fiberglass, which oh. is actually what we have. The the gray, the brown stuff is rock wool, whereas pink is typically fiberglass. Can you get rock wool in rigid. Yeah. Rigid board, because that would be. I mean, you practically make a kiln out of that. Probably. Rigid. Rigid rock wool. Oh yeah. Or that. Now we're talking. Rigid, but it's not that rigid. It's pretty soft still. It's like it's almost like the soft bats. Um, Roxel, yeah, it's still it, it's bendy. It's not okay. structural. Um, but then, then that's pretty easy. Okay. Cement board. You get into things like cement board, which are definitely high temp, but it's like but it's, it's not, not it doesn't have the wiper temp. property. Yeah. So and even this, the the pink foam that doesn't have the wiper property you'd have to kind of seal it up a little but more this, there. now then you could very easily just do a light wood frame screw through yeah. this yeah and hold that be on the back side of it oh yeah and that, that would be good it's super easy i'm just trying to think like how we make it work well without like right now you can take you can take plywood this insulation yeah, exactly. on the inside just a freaking plywood box Let's see, Roxel yeah. Menards. Let's see what they've got any um, plastic foam board insulation rolls and bats, loose fill, radiant barrier, foundation, ooh, insulation and coatings. Like this board here, what's it, what is that? Aggregate foundation insulation panel? What is this? Oh, R5, styro, aggregate finish. It's styrofoam. Styrofoam, so probably not, not right? No. Um, if you can, if we can find polyurethane that has a higher, fairly high temp polyurethane foam board, I think. Polyiso, is that what we're talking about? That's polyurethane foam temperature. Yeah, this Roxel stuff would be cool, like a bat that's on the inside. Yeah, it's definitely doable. You still, still got to do all the top edges and stuff like that. I mean, uh, but that you can frame. That's you can frame that. You can frame that pretty easy. Yeah. But then again, why don't we just take, you know, the simplest thing would be to take a wood wood thing and put the regular bat insulation on the inside and staple it and stuff. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's got the paper backing on it too. You could do that. Um, but then... And that pretty much addresses a lot of the issues. And just, I mean, if you're stapling it, it's only... You have to maybe like wise, screw it. You're going to have... Screw it with like uh, these uh, screws oh, with washers. With the washers, gotcha. Yeah, we do that. Totally. That's nice and easy. The <laughs> screw, nice. screws through fiberglass tend to catch and might. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Um, yes, they do. Um, um, that's why another mesh, like for example, what about uh, if we took that insulation and just put a mesh on the inside, like steel mesh? So, what's available, like, what about. Steel mesh, which is uh, stucco mesh. Yep. That's that's a way to go. 
Stucco mash. Steel stucco mash. Stucco mash. Yeah, like this stuff, man. Oh, yeah, there we go. I just feel like the rock wool. Rock. Uh, even. How about this, man? Well, there. Uh, there we go. Is that is that metal? Yeah. How do you know? Because I can see Stucco the netting. Tops. I can see the, the mesh pattern on the top of the roll. Yeah. It looks like it. I would do it. But. K laugh. Woven wire. Yeah. Chicken wire. Yeah. Could do chicken wire. Yeah, chicken wire would be great. Um, chicken wire would work, yeah. For you basically have to wrap. You got to frame. You got to frame it up, which is easy. But then chicken wire holds the insulation in place. Yeah, that's actually not a, not a too bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's super easy. I mean, we could just like do like the full U of it and wrap mm -hmm. chicken wire and just nail through the corners into the studs in a sense do you get what i'm saying like that into the corner yeah yeah like, sure yeah and then it will just tag and hold it you don't have to grab the insulation yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. you don't have to grab the insulation yeah with the screw yeah right yeah so you could have like two um, two foot centers or like 18 inch centers like for the bats i think you could do it full length yeah. Tag it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chicken wire? Yeah. Chicken wire is safe. That's uh -huh. Yeah. Um is the is the rock wool more a little bit more solid? It is more solid. I kind of yeah, I'm thinking what I remember of it. I for some reason feel like the rock wool would just be a nicer product this all out of and I know it's specifically I mean it what it, it to make it it goes up to like twelve hundred and something C or something so because um, it's basically expanded rock. It's like popcorn rock. Is it something we can get? Oh look at that. Well, please, Let's see uh, nine in stock. So is that what it looks like? It looks like that. It's it's bats, but it's more tight than your regular insulation. Yeah. It's a little nicer because I don't think it will, and it will flake as much. The fibers either. Yeah. I don't like being around. It's just like fiberglass, but it's it's basically expanded rock. Like, it's the same stuff that we stuck yeah, in. Yeah, this is actually pretty nice. Uh, 34 square feet, 35 square feet. Uh, we need like about 5 feet by 15. Well, we need about 60. So we need two of these. Yeah? Yeah. And frame it with 2 by 4s? Yeah. R15, that's decent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Framing is the good part, it's easy. Super easy. Yeah. But you get that decomposition of wood thing, that's the only thing. So, you're not going to get that through the. That's going to insulate. Oh, uh, how are you framed? So, how are you doing like a sheet? So, what are we doing? Uh, are we doing sheet and then, or are we framing? Sheet, how about, well, what do you think? So chicken wire on the inside? So you're insulating guess, through that. I guess we could make it super simple. We could build the frame, um, <coughs> staple on chicken wire, sandwich the insulation between that and another layer of chicken wire. So it's support, and then you just do literally like just the outer legs. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to then frame in between. Okay, so you're saying just the outer edges, like literally your um, your 
It's going to say vertices. Is it vertices? So we're doing a C? C shape? Yeah. So let's see. So we're going to have, so just to exaggerate the C shape, we got six pieces of two by four top and bottom. So this is looking from the top. So where yeah. are the two by fours now? Just the, the corners. So what do we got? We got them I mean, the other way, right? It could be, honestly, you do two by four, you could do two by two. I think it would be plenty of your structure. With top and bottom? You gotta have top and bottom. Um, yeah. Now, the parts that are, for example, say on the top, uh, they're in a heat zone, right? So this could be like, I mean, you, you, let's see here, you'd have to have like an end to it, right? And end structure, but keep the, you'd like it to be open so you have a wiper made of that same rock wool. Basically, what I'm imagining is like, if there's like a stud here, stud here, stud here, stud here, and top plates. Um, and then you just staple on your like chicken wire there, put in your rock wool so it's hanging out a bit like that. And then you've got your wiper and then round and then staple in again, or I'm not sure how you would attach the chicken wire the second time, but sandwich um, the rock wool between two layers of mesh wire. Yeah, does that make sense? No. No. Nope. Uh, so where's uh, so do you using two by fours? We could do. I think honestly, you only need like like two by two for it. It'd be plenty. That's the two by four though. Hmm? Uh, two by twos will end up warping more um, warpage. Yeah, possibly. Um, stuff, though. But let's see, so this one you're doing a top plate here, kind of a... Yeah. You're doing a top plate over these. Right, so always this edge, so what happens to this edge? Are you insulating that? I just thought we, like, if we've got this as the inside of it, wrap around um, chicken wire first. Oh yeah, wrap around it. On the inside. Then put in your mesh, um, sorry, put in your um, insulation, and then just put another layer of mesh over the top of it to hold it in place. So it's sandwiched twice, and then at the ends, you leave it sticking out and so that you have a gasket of rock wool that the, um, yeah, does that make sense? So are you saying like for the C, like you've got another two by here? Yeah, or I'd do it kind of. But this way you're getting rid of the wiper thing. Um, no, I mean, it's just, you basically need top pieces. Top pieces. And then, um, and then your, like, yeah, what's, it's just, you're basically just building a tiny wall. Mm-hmm. So more like this here or something? Um, no, I would do like, just like you're framing up a normal stud wall, basically. I mean, you don't have to put a corner in for it, because one stud is plenty enough. enough. Yeah, like that, just right at the end. But how, uh, how are you doing a wiper thing there? A wiper by the having the rock wool caught between two um, like there's mesh holding it on the back side so it doesn't like flop out too much. Oh so you just frame a wall and basically putting a layer of Yeah on the inside of it inside of that. and then you let it okay. hang out the end. Okay. And then that's your wiper. Uh, so if you mesh it around that the wiper includes the, the steel of the the chicken wire? No, it's chicken wire here, and then you're attaching it here, and the rock wool sticks out the end of it. Mm -hmm. I see. 
Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you got rock wool like kind of like this. Not on no. the inside. You'd be putting it on the outside, right? Uh, I'd be going yeah. like here. Except inside the entire frame. Going like that? More like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the chicken wire ends like right there? Ends like right there. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're framing this up then. Yeah. yeah. With chicken wire on the inside, insulation, chicken wire. Yeah, I mean, I. A nice I, little sausage of insulation. Yeah. Perfect. This, the frame, the, to frame this is easy, yeah. I mean, that. honestly, you could do chicken wire on the back, and then you could run like a few just zigzags of wire across it to hold it against mm. the chicken wire. You don't even have to put chicken wire on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. And then honestly, we could staple more of it on the top of the frame as the top gasket at the rock wall on the top. Oh, uh, yeah. A nice, cushy, um, spongy gasket. Yeah, that stuff might break break off. It would, yeah. Like, unlike the fiberglass, it would be more breaky. Maybe we could just do it with the fiberglass, the one, the rock wool, the brown fiberglass, the brown rock wool that we have here already. That's that's actually rock wool too. Yeah. It's not the fiberglass. That's like the, that's like the flaky stuff though, right? That's yeah. The real small. Yeah. yeah. But it holds better because you get little chunks off this rock wool thing. They come off and they, it doesn't like to stick together. The fibers are shorter. It seems. Because I know the stuff they make like the planting blocks out of. Mm-hmm. That stuff's solid. It's like. It doesn't come apart particularly. They make like so, um, little planting block stuff. So we make this frame wall standard construction and then do this internal internal layer of... So why not do it with... Uh, well, we can do it with regular insulation, yeah, with uh, board insulation. But yeah, this works. This addresses the insulation value and it has a structure. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, where would you put the mesh? Outside? Or inside? Inside. Inside. Inside and then the, the insulation on top of it and then maybe another layer of chicken wire mm -hmm. or just wire zigzagging back chicken and forth. Chicken wire mesh. The chicken wire. Either way. What's cool here is that the carpentry allows you easy geometry. That's That would be fast. Yeah, yeah. super fast. So, yeah. Could knock it up. Let's do it. Um, Yeah. Um, no plywood. No plywood. No plywood. Just uh, so the framing, it would be just basic framing on the outside. Uh, so just leave it. No plywood. Just just framing on the outside. You, you see the framing. It's like a wall. It's like a rough framed wall yeah. on the outside, yeah. Sure could be. Yeah. That gives you a ability to attach things to it, things like that. So it's flexible. It's easy to work with. And then for what happens in this section here, this one, this middle. So the middle part, we just frame a little wall and scab it across the top and bottom. Yeah, or yeah. do like your polycarbonate idea, whatever. Um, <laughs> Well, so here the wiper, continuation of the wiper is we're just wrapping this up with like that, right? Is that what we're doing? So then put a sausage of this insulation on a flat sure. piece. There you go. Yeah. You need, yeah. That works. Yeah. Any challenges, problems that could come out of when we can address it? At the design phase? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> you see the reality of it. I mean, the reality is going to be wild. Um, 
if we use the chicken wire on there, if you have this sausage bit sticking out of the chicken wire, so I guess we should draw in, uh, thing of interest would be to say that's the chicken wire layer there. So end it before the edge so that you're not scratching up your, yeah. your rods. So that's your chicken wire there. So the, to draw the chicken wire, be more like basically it ends before the edge right there it's kind of like that mm -hmm. yeah sure sure wow. um, that'd be great and then you can put the top cover on easily you can just screw it screw it on uh, here we close these gaps flat. You can just put you can put a top plate on this to close it flat <laughs> using standard carpentry techniques. So uh -huh. so then you close up this gap at the top and a bottom plate. Yeah, so we should do a bottom plate and top plate, stand these walls up, and that's yeah. it. Like a mini house, We're mini hot house. House constructors. The house is just a big box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's an easy way to address the bottom connection, top connection, yeah, attachment of the top cover, yeah, could do that, easy enough. Well, it certainly would be, uh, I think, more flexible, this gives you the flexibility to adjust things, that's the good part, because with the metal, if you weld it, that's kind of there, and fixed. Um. Hmm. And just like they have wonderboard light as well, maybe a little less conducting of heat, um, which is cement board, but it's like I'm just trying to think of like or the insulation. Yeah, that's not not much insulation you'd still need a structure behind that mm -hmm. but but like as, as, as the mesh you're saying instead of the mesh yeah, it's sure. not really a I that's not an insulator though mm -hmm. so it's much not quote insulated, that's for sure. no. i'm just trying to think of something we can do it out of like rigid foam <laughs> i just really want to do it like that and do it super easy, easy. just like pop 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 Well, this is advantage of the wiper. Wipers included. We're still screwing in. Are we still screwing in through the the fiber insulation? Yeah. And get the little knots. Nails yeah, if you screw it in not so deep, it yeah, won't wrap too so much. It yeah. Mm -hmm. Either way. Yeah. Imagine we just have literally like rigid foam that you could like put seam tape on and like just literally just fold it in place and yeah. it's super light. You yeah, can lift it in and out like nobody's business. Where would that be used though? I mean, look at this uh, already existing product. Yeah, that's we were looking for rock wool. I feel like there's a rigid rock wool, not just like rock wool that's like vats of insulation. Um, I think the problem comes with the door. Yeah, it's like we should mount a camera inside of it. Just watch it fail. This is going to be all enclosed, right? Yeah. You want to be hook up a web camera? And, uh... Well, this kind of stuff here, something that has a face on it. Yeah, with a silver on it. Yeah. Is it expanded polished iron, though? 
That's mineral wool here, but mineral that's I don't know where to get it. Um, I don't think we find that. Mineral wool with a side with the reflection. This the second one you're saying, or the eco core? Yeah. It's mineral wool, so it'd be high temp. Yeah. But I don't know where to but get still that kind of a thing. Maybe spongy. I don't know. If it's spongy, then you put, say, aluminum flashing on it, make it stiff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I could do that. Um. This would be easier, like if you could do a complex 3D printable form that you insert these baths of insulation or something like that into it. Or like maybe like angle and then I don't know, it's it's all kind of complicated in detail. Yeah, like if we use framing, we what we should be using is probably um, that the insulation is on the inside of the frame, like in standard construction. Yeah. So put the mesh outside Well, you're not really at that point, right? So that's where going back to metal makes sense. Anyway, I think to protect the wood fully and do the simple framing, I think, I don't know, just use the bats like we have here, put mesh on that. I think that's it. We should test it. We can yeah. think about it a lot. We gotta prototype it. Yeah. All right.
Yeah, get in a workshop then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> 